Hi, so I was meant to upload this weeks ago, uh, and so welcome to the top 7 coolest abandoned places in the world. I did make one about the creepiest abandoned places, and if you wanted to watch that, the link is at the top of the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a thumbs up, S same thing. And if you're not already subscribed, then you're welcome to do that. Something I haven't included on this list is my recent birthday party. No one came. Anyway, starting off the lesson number 7 is Hashima Island in Japan. It's about 15 kilometers south of Nagasaki, which is one of the city's atom bombed by the USA in 1945, and the island was perfectly placed above undersea coal mines, and so was used extensively during the industrialization of Japan in the 1880s. The island was abandoned in 1974 after the mine closed down, and since 2009 there have been guided tours throughout the island. For interested urban explorers, the mines are very popular with tourists, but I, I don't know, I, I, I prefer them when they're just a bit more underground, you know? I get that! Thanks, thanks, thanks dude. Because mines are underground! Yep, yep, that's, uh, that, that's, that's the one. Coming in at number six is the Bulgarian Communist Party house in, in, in Bulgaria. It looks awesome from the outside, and on the inside it genuinely looks like something out of Star Wars. By the way, Star Wars, if there's not a Jar Jar Binks spin-off after this new franchise, um, I will stage a coup. What did George Lucas and Whittaker's Chocolate Milk have in common? They both sold out. That was a joke for anyone watching in New Zealand, what up? Anyway, the party house was completed in 1981 as a meeting place for foreign dignitaries and local communist leaders before being abandoned 10 years later after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. It's built only 17 kilometers away from the Battle of Shipka Pass took place in 1877, which was a huge turning point in Bulgarian history, and dotted around the place are various artworks of communist leaders like Stalin and Lenin, reportedly completed by over 60 artists, and since the party house was abandoned in 1991, the Bulgarian Quidditch team have gone on to have huge success. Number 5 is City Hall subway station in New York City. Construction began at the start of the 20th century, and the station was officially opened in 1904, before use was discontinued in 1945 after renovation plans were scrapped due to the unusual architecture of the platform and the fact that it had fallen into relative disuse. There is the occasional tour having started again in 2006, but they aren't often because the amount of people who actually fit the criteria to take the tour is relatively small. It is possible to see the station if you stay on a certain train as it loops around the track though. Um, I was at a train station the other day and this is genuinely true, and on the other side of the tracks there was an advertisement, you know, there's, there's often advertisements on the other side of the tracks, it's not unusual, but this advertisement said, can you read this? Come closer. No, I won't come closer because that's where the fucking trains are. I mean, that's not an advertisement. That That is health and safety gone wrong. We are pleased to announce that we have built our very first underground train station. Where does it go? Oh. Sliding its way into your DM, sliding its way into... Number four is Disney's Discovery Island in Florida. The island closed in 1999 amid speculation that a brain-eating amoeba had been found in the water surrounding it, although this has never been confirmed or denied, so let the speculation continue. It was originally opened in 1974 under the name Treasure Island before becoming a zoological park named Discovery Island several years later, and you can still see the island from a couple of Disney resorts still in operation, which is cool and I'd love to go, uh, but I am still a bit bitter about some of the stuff Disney lied to us about. For example, kissing a woman in a coma doesn't make them wake up, it just makes the family very angry and you get arrested. If you call a dwarf happy, chances are he won't be. And if you meet a half lion, half bear man who lives in a castle in the middle of the woods whilst his cutlery dances and sings around you, chances are you have taken too many drugs. That isn't real life, Belle. Your dad's very disappointed in you. Anyway, number three is an underwater city in China. It lies in the valley at the base of Wuxi Mountain, which translates in English to Five Lion Mountain. The area was flooded in 1959 to create a lake for a local dam project after the completion of a hydroelectric station, and the lake covers 573 square kilometers, while the submerged city lies just 25 meters below the surface. Shichen is an ancient Chinese city established during the Eastern Han Dynasty about 2,000 years ago, and so the architecture is quite understandably remarkable, and it used to be the centre of political and economic discussion for Eastern China. Diving tours are gradually growing in popularity. In fact, I think they're being flooded with requests, am I right? That was a good pun. Who are you? Smashing its way into number two is, um, is Kolmanskop in Namibia. It was a diamond mining village that began operating in 1908 after German men working on the railway found diamonds in the area before being abandoned in 1954 when the diamond fields had been slowly exhausted. Because the village is situated in the middle of the Namib desert, many of the houses once lived in are nearly covered by sand and tourists entering the area need a special permit as Kolmanskop 
is in a prohibited part of Namibia known colloquially as Diamond Area 1. Because Common Scott was built on the wealth of diamond mining, it had many amenities that other African towns did not, such as a movie theatre, x-ray machines and ice factories, as well as the first tram in Africa. I am heading to North Africa uh, next year and I'm hoping I'll be alright, I'm hoping I'm going to stay hydrated. And I think I should stay hydrated because I've got this stuff. Uh, which says it's in hydration, so uh, I should be fine. I should just, you know, lick that and it's instant, so hopefully. And finally, at number one, we have the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, as well as Pripyat in, in Ukraine, obviously. Had to, had to be, didn't it, really? Famous for the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear disaster and for disappointing everyone by not producing any superheroes, Pripyat was established as a city by the USSR in 1979, with a population of nearly 50,000 by the time it was evacuated. 92,000 people were eventually evacuated in the aftermath of the disaster and the Ukrainian government has recently started giving tours through the zone as radiation levels have been thought to have dropped significantly since the disaster. About 197 people still live in the zone having refused to leave and there are roughly 3,000 workers daily inside the zone working unusual shift hours so as not to be possibly poisoned by the radiation. Let's be honest though, Chernobyl was still uh, way more successful than anything North Korea is doing. You know, I mean, they made a missile, it didn't really, it just went to the, it's, it's a submarine now. So that was the list, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, uh, maybe a, a thumbs up would be wonderful, thank you, uh, if, if that's alright. And uh, if, you, if you're not already subscribed, you're totally welcome to do that. I have made another list video, the creepiest abandoned places, just there, also the link is at the top of the description. This is my Snapchat. Um, I will see you guys very soon. Goodbye. As well, nearly. Hotel room tour. That's it. If you discover a fire, steal a child.